Welcome to Audio Technology Magazine's ISO Booth Podcast, where we phone audio engineers and producers at home, and thanks to the pandemic lockdown, they answer. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us for our latest AT podcast called ISO Booth. Um, Oh, yeah, you like that? You like that? Yeah, thank you. Um, I've got Dave Clark with me. Um, Dave's a uh, good friend of the magazine and um, um, also the Baron of Techno. I'm sure he's not being, not uh, sick of hearing that. Uh, DJ extraordinaire um, and Amsterdam resident. Dave, how are you going? I'm good, actually. Um, as the joke goes, a lot of us people that produce music are sort of equipped for this lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those people that uh, are lucky enough to do remixes and lucky enough to not have bands in their studio uh, are used to having stems sent in isolation anyway. So, uh, <laughs> in many ways, we are equipped for this. Business um, as usual, Dave? No, no business at all, actually. Oh, okay, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll be... Uh, I, I think worst case scenario, is, uh, best case scenario is six months. I think worst case scenario is probably 18 months, and then mm. it'll be a different world, so mm. maybe I'll have to learn carpentry or something. Um, but, um, no, I mean, it, mm. it, it's okay. Uh, I saw this coming. Yeah. Um, I was putting on Facebook in February, can we please shut down all the events, uh, big gatherings, football, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Few people called me a lunatic, didn't mm. understand. But the fact is that I've traveled the world extensively for 25 years. Mm. Uh, I see how politics work. Um, and also, I, I think I felt that most people thought this was going to be SARS number two, which would have been bad but regionalized yeah and the only sort of i think a lot of people are hoping that the only touching presence that we would have from this this virus was that if ever we went to asia we would have to go through airports with thermometer control cameras um and i think a lot of people thought that that's mm. my best impression of how people were dealing with it. i also have another impression which i'm not going to discuss right now mm -hmm. um but I saw this happening, mm. and I was really surprised by how slow the world caught up with it. Mm. And then not only how slow they caught up, and how they all had the same dialogue of like, yeah, it's just a really bad flu. Oh, it's not a really bad flu. Then mm. the next country, yeah, it's just a really bad flu. Mm. Oh, it's not a really bad flu. Mm. And I was trying to do the decent thing from the DJ side of things of actually thinking ahead and canceling a few events because I mm. could not for the life of me see them happening. Yep. Uh, for a variety of reasons. It just didn't make any sense. Mm. Uh, so I cancelled Russia, uh, an event that was going to go, I think, in about two weeks' time. Yep. To enable the promoter to rethink everything, to not sell tickets in my name, mm. to enable all the people, you know, just to make life easier because sure. also they hadn't done all the paperwork for the visa and all that stuff at that time. So I still hadn't had it. Yep. Um, and uh, no money had been sent to that particular time because it was two months ago just to make things easier and then you get called out for being basically an unfit old man uh, stuff like that uh, I would, that's harsh. I wanted to count it is harsh but you know mm. um, they've got Putin to deal with now so mm. Mm. Uh, it's, a, it's a shame thing and, and, and with Australia I wanted to come down desperately because last year I was supposed to come down I had pneumonia sadly so I couldn't um, and then this year it seems like pneumonia is on everyone's mind mm. and I tried to cancel initially. It was okay, mm. but you know they were telling me that the Formula One's still going. This is still going. It's a bad flu. Everyone's overreacting. Yep. And I was like, yeah, but you know, what happens if I get caught in quarantine on the way down, or what happens if I get mm. caught in Australia for six months? Mm. So, yep. uh, and eventually that all caught up, and people sort of understood yep. um, what was going on. But it's it's a strange time for sure mm. for everyone. I mean. Mm. I have. I don't think I'm gonna have any DJ. I, I still do radio shows, and I do that to keep up morale of myself and also mm. the people that listen. Mm. I'm doing stuff for ADE, Amsterdam Dance Events, still. Yep. Uh, just finished a remix for Placebo as well. So yeah, still busy, but yep. no travelling at all. Sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it gives you um, a little time on your hands, so um, you can start some projects. Um, yeah, I mean, what I did was um, I finished the rebuild of my studio actually last week. Um, 
completely and absolutely it's completely mm. done cool. it's you know uh, and luckily in Amsterdam I can still go to the boat uh, because there's no real heavy restriction walking around so that's, good. that's okay it's good um, um, they, they treat things a little bit more sensibly here uh, whether they're right or wrong the proof will be in the pudding um, but for the first even though I expected all of this to happen mm. for the first day 10 days I was quite morose and mm. actually I was quite uh, I was mourning Mm. Um, yeah, not I get mourning it. for the better part of the life because mm. we were all making mistakes in how we were running our lives mm. but I was mourning for the change in life and yeah. I think a lot of people need to do this to find strength within themselves to move mm. forward mm. Uh, because it's a big change you can't mm. conduct the same business you can't present the same face on Instagram if you're that kind of person mm. you have to mourn the difficulties that are coming, be prepared mm. for them. Mm. Um, but the irony is that my studio has never been in better condition. Mm. Um, all the machines make sense ergonomically for heat distribution, uh, cable distribution. I mean, the studio is now in its best ever uh, state. Um, mm. New Mac Pro is amazing. Mm. Um, there's going to be no updates coming from any software developers probably in about two or three weeks because <laughs> nothing is changing. So I don't have to concentrate on updating all my software anymore soon. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I finished a project for Stefan Osdell uh, from uh, Placebo uh, mm. just before I completely finished. And mm. I've got some other projects to do. So I'm actually, mm. yeah, it's quite exciting. But the difficulty mm. is even though... I'm used to not working with people or in offices is the loss of structure of the days. Yeah, That's every every day it, it feels like Christmas week, doesn't it? Yeah, but without um, without the uh, presence without, and uh, Bruce Willis and Pie <laughs> um, Yeah, it, it definitely does. And the thing you is can like, have my Netflix uh, conversation. Yep. <laughs> Even this conversation that we're having now mm. has drifted on for 10 days in arranging mm. because, it, you know, I'm, 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 I've lost a few <laughs> meetings, like Skype meetings with people because I've forgotten what bloody day it is. Mm. I don't set an alarm in the morning. Mm. I wake up with the birds and the, suns, and the, and the mm. sun now. So, mm. you know, th there's a lot of structure that's lost that will come back, hopefully. Yeah. So uh, let's um, deep dive into your studio. Um, Okay. First, first question is, um, talk to me about the new Mac Pro. Yeah, it came, uh, I got it at the very, very beginning of January, uh, like January the 3rd or something. Mm -hmm. uh, How long have you been waiting for this computer? Uh, five years. <laughs> because, because when the new Mac Pro came out, the dustbin one, mm. uh, the trash can one, um, I couldn't see the point of it at all. Yes, of course, the brute power compared to the old Mac Pro, the, the, the internal uh, uh, construction of memory and faster memory and blah, 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 but I couldn't see the point of it because it basically looked like another plastic square uh, iMac, you know, mm. like they came out with ages ago. Mm. And there was zero upgradability apart from if you've got another box and another box and another box and another box all linked together by Thunderbolt, and then it basically just looked like a... a fucking ridiculous thing um, and even though you could rack mount them it didn't mm. make any sense it just so I waited and waited and also my Hackintosh at the time the benchmark test I was doing was still fucking that dustbin mac massively yep. so yeah that that was okay but I've been waiting for this for ages and ages and ages and ages mm. Mm. and then finally it came out and I was like brilliant Mm. And I was already using a program called Go64, which is a free program, which analyzes all the software you have on your computer and tells you which is going to be compatible with uh, Catalina, because obviously the new machine could only be with Catalina. Sure. And actually, to my surprise, uh, most things were okay. I want to have a go at one uh, manufacturer, actually, that's Lexcan. Lexcan fucking sucks. <laughs> They've been on native... Uh, for, uh, uh, and they still call it an Intel uh, version of their program since 1.26 for fucking ages. Mm. There's a new. Uh, At least it's not the Motorola version. Uh, sorry. So At least it's not the Motorola version. <laughs> no, it's the Nokia version. <laughs> um, and it, it still says May 2019, but yep. it's exactly the same package as it was 2016. Mm. And now their certificates have run out, so I've lost mm. all my letters and stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, how sad are you about that? Like, what were you, what were you relying on in Lexicon world? 
You just uh, love the sound I, of your 4 ADL. No, because actually Universal do that really well. Mm. Um, and I think Waves do that one too. Mm. Um, no, it was just some of the sort of cathedral sounds. Mm. But then I found, I think it's Sound Waves, they do a broadcasting version. Uh, maybe it's not Sound Waves, but someone else that does the broadcasting. And actually, yeah, I, I'm really pissed off that I spent a thousand euros on the plugin in 2012 that has no upgradeability. Mm. But you probably need to delete it. But guess what? Mm. The uninstaller is also incompatible with Catalina, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got no way of clean. I've got no way of clean uninstalling it apart from taking it out of the AU manager. Anyway, gropes mm. aside, um, the machine is amazing. Yep. Um, sometimes it still shoves everything on one core, even though I've got like fucking too many cores. Sometimes it does. Uh, Arturia seems to have calmed down. It doesn't seem to trigger it so much anymore. But a few programs within native, like uh, there's a plugin from Slate and Ash, uh, which is a really nice synth, and mm. it's unusable in Logic. It just it, it just peaks one of the one of the cores, and then it just uh, glitches everything. Mm. But 95% of everything is very very useful. The, the the remix that I did for Stefan, I had maybe 160 plugins uh, live, and I was using maybe. 24% of a third of my cores. Mm. So mm. I'm not complaining at all anymore. Mm. One thing that I was thinking of doing was actually moving up to 96. Um, but actually, I can't see the point unless I'm. You still get your history. 96, but I can't see the point unless I'm working with uh, my violinist friend for doing that. It doesn't seem to be any point. So I'm sticking at 44.1 but 24 mm. bit. Mm -hmm. And the headroom that I have in this computer. Is immense. I had to wait three weeks for the, the screen to be delivered, um, and I I do miss having three screens. Actually, uh, I've used Sidecar, um, and Sidecar is okay. It's a lot better than what Logic Remote used to be because there used to be mm. around 40 milliseconds of delay before touching stuff. It's quite it's much faster now, mm. and it's nice to be able to touch plugins and actually you know move stuff around. Yep. have a tactile feel yep. and actually that's quite nice if you are wanting to do uh, a live write of of some of the parameters of your plugins okay. whilst the track goes from left to right that's sure. actually quite nice yep um, I would like a little bit maybe more haptic feedback from from an iPad yep. to get a little bit of resistance and feeling yep but it, it's okay um, mm. maybe mm. I'll get another screen but I've got to work out a way of fitting it in because unfortunately the I got the second best uh, graphics card, and that means you can run three 4K screens or two 6K screens. And What's the screen that you've got? The, the, the Mac screen, the 6K Retina. Right. I don't notice that much difference, actually. It's a little bit like me uh, watching uh, normal television and putting my glasses on. Yep. Yep. Does it's the... not that much of a difference. So, um, the, like... Sorry, I'm a bit distracted because I just noticed that I'm kind of on 20% power. You look like you're searching for horseshoe bats. Sorry. Just check. No, okay. So anyway, we, we may we may run out of uh, time, and it, I'm just I'm just going to keep an eye on my battery. I I, I left my battery at work, and for, I charge at work, unfortunately. So with the um, so with the 6K screen, and you've got a bunch of um, windows open. Um, I guess it's down to the, the the UI of of the software developers, really, isn't it? When you got a screen with that many yeah. dots. I'm using screenshots uh, more now. Mm. Um, so before, I would have on the main screen the arrange window. On the left screen, I'd have the mix window. On the right screen, I would have some uh, metering software or a plugin that I'm using, or three or four plugins I'm using, mm. and that luxury is now gone. I have mm. a bigger central screen now, mm. and then I have the mixer underneath, mm. um, but then screenshot two, mm. uh, so screenshot one will be just be the arrange window, screenshot two will be the mix window, mm. and screenshot three will be something else, and I've programmed the function keys to do that, so I've got mm. some sort of fast way of, of doing that. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to complain. It's it's mm. it's a lot of definition in a 30-inch mm. screen. I just have to work differently. Mm. So. And, and logic. Um, so clearly, logic is optimized for this amazing beast of a computer. Like, do you do you just notice that as far as just 
you know, the performance I, of your door? Um, I still notice that it doesn't distribute uh, DSP evenly. It doesn't seem... What I would love is if you could actually, if you have like a really big synth, that you could actually assign that to a core and then just have that in isolation so it has its own core that it doesn't feed into any DSP sharing of anything else. So if you've got like a massive synth and just go, okay, I'm going to give it to this core and this mm. core alone. Uh, that would be a really, really cool thing mm. because I get the feeling that the core still isn't maximized for the power of the machine yeah. yet. And, and I guess, Maybe it will yeah. be. And I guess music making and all recording is um, is a pretty specific kind of task for that sort of computer. You, you know, I guess when they're making it, they're thinking of people running, you know, Final Cut Pro um, with, you know, a whole bunch of 4K uh, movies yeah. going, but that's probably a very different demand on the on the process. I also I also bought the new uh, Apogee Symphony Two uh, because obviously the old one was really really old. Now uh, it, this was too old and very noisy. Even though I had like a Dyson Hoover feeding it air, it still very uh, not Hoover uh, fan. It was still very noisy. <laughs> Hoover would have and been better. <laughs> you suck it out. Um, so with with the uh, the Apogee, mm. uh, I was told that both my old cards would work. Mm. So that was exciting because I might have gone for an Aurora uh, Lynx thirty two. Um, maybe I mean Prism haven't done anything for about thirty five years now. I think I think they're still <laughs> I think they're still uh, have a little, a little person in there turning the wheels in, in those machines, but a very good person making it sound very good. But it's uh, of its time. Um, so I looked at various different things, um, and I, I stayed with Apogee, even though they generally just do con consumer per uh, peripherals now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, one of the cars did work, which was my 18 8 out uh, Mark II. That worked straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. But the other one didn't, uh, which was a 16 out, only a 16 out. It just didn't work. And it was causing the fan to go on full scale. And that was like, oh shit, this is even noisier than the last motherfucker. Um, <laughs> But uh, we then I then unplugged it and then plugged in the eight and the eight was fine. The fan stopped, mm. uh, and that's okay. And then I had to get a new bloody three grand card. But on the bright side now, I actually have some inputs, so I can actually because I never needed any inputs <laughs> at all. And now I've got some inputs, so I can actually record people uh, live into the machine. So, so I was a little bit pissed about having to buy a new card when actually on the Apogee site. Although I am two years later buying this new. Symphony, because obviously it came out a while ago. Mm. It's not very clear what cards do and do not work. Mm. Uh, but saying that, machine is, is perfect. Um, uh, I don't even have it near me anymore because there's no point because I can actually remote uh, watch the, the levels and stuff. Mm. Um, fire actually sidecar on my uh, on my iPad. I can just have the levels on there, and that's actually quite useful. Mm. Um, so that's cool. I unwittingly didn't realize that TC Electronic is in Music Tribe. Uh, and so don't I you like Uli? I am with... <laughs> he looks remarkably young, doesn't he, in his press photos? Um, <laughs> must be drinking the blood of young developers. Um, <laughs> Unicorns. Allegedly. Um, <laughs> yes, anyway, so... Um, uh, so I am with have two... Uh, uh, music tribe products in my studio, but mm. they're cute. Um, it's basically the TC Electronic uh, hardware um, oh. effects uh, things like the DVR 250, oh. I think it is, and the TC 2290. The 2290 delay. Uh, cool. Yeah, even though I've got that in other forms, it's actually nice to have a physical form to play with of mm. that mm. that actually corresponds with the old machine. And it's easy to see. So I actually have that next to my mixer, mm. uh, next to the auxiliary return channels. Mm. And that, it's a nice feeling. Mm. And I, I really am really very happy with the Broadcasty um, uh, plug-in. That is superb. I mean, mm. I don't really need the Lexicons anymore, you're right. Um, mm. And I found another really cool plug-in that I've been wanting for for ages, which is, I think, by Softube or someone else. And it's a cassette tape um, uh, 
replica thing where you can choose different cassette tapes and cool. how old they are. Right. Because I actually recorded a lot of my old tracks on cassette tapes, <laughs> and I miss that sound. I couldn't afford reel to reel, but I used to have uh, SAX, uh, MAX Gs, and I, I actually miss that sound. And it's yeah. really nice to have that sound fresh out the out of the box like a fresh tape. Yep. Um, because I found an old demo that I did in 1994 with a guy called Carl Fitzhugh, who used to be one half of Rhyme and Reason, who rapped on Satan with Orbital. And we, I put it on my Saga radio show the last I time. I heard that. Called Planet, yeah. Called Planet yeah. Infected. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Really was weird. Good. But, but the sound of the cassette yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's good to have that too. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um... Tell me about, I guess, uh, what you've rationalized in your hardware compressor rack. Maybe, maybe for the benefit of the tape, you could sort of describe briefly how you work and why you have a rack of compressors and outboard. Well, I, I lost a lot of my musical equipment due to divorce around 2003, 2005, like 80% of my musical equipment mm -hmm. sold. Mm. But I managed to save a few things like compressors, um, and also I think I realised that they would be pretty good for a long time to come. So uh, the way that I record is that um, I kept a lot of these compressors, mm. and I record from um, so I record in Logic, and then I choose which output is going to go to, and then the output goes straight to different compressors. Mm. Uh, based on what program it is, so if it's drums it will go to a distressor, if it's uh, Dave Grohl doing his washing in the morning of his hair, that will go through an API 2500 to get that Foo Fighters sound. Um, if I'm if, um, doing uh, various different high percussion then that will go through a Fatso. Um, if I'm doing bass lines that will go through a Roll 755, um, same with the Avalon 747. Um, so I ship it out mm. to various different compressors mm. and the majority of my compressors now actually have a setting that I very rarely change because it's my sound, sure. it's the sound I'm expecting from these compressors. Maybe yep. it's a waste, but I think a lot of people do work like that probably because the compressor rack in big studios is way, way behind and no one can really be bothered sure. to keep turning their ears to hear the difference. Um, so I have sounds that I like in all the compressors and I do mm. change them a little bit but not very often. Yep. And uh, then it comes back into the mixer, uh, so out the Apogee, into the compressors, out the compressors, into the mixer. So this is your and summing, this is your, this is, this is your use, what is it again, yeah. an SPL? SPL, um, 120 volt um, mixer. Yep, um, it has a name I, which neither of us can remember. NEOS, N-E-O-S. Yeah, yeah, um, right. And ironically, I don't even touch faders anymore, I haven't done for about three or four years because actually, again, I've got the faders set the way I like them mm. and any uh, game change happens within the, the DAW, mm. it makes more sense actually, mm. um, which is a shame because I have to hoover out the pans quite a lot because nothing moves, but it's okay. Um, and then it comes out in the mixer, I got rid of my better maker by the way because I actually I didn't really use it, so it okay. comes out in the mixer, it goes straight into a Clarifonic. Mm -hmm. And then if from the Clarifonic into an STC-8, which just tickles the output a little bit. And from the STC-8, it then goes into a very, very old 23-year-old Crane Song head, mm -hmm. which has been on the last two albums. Been waiting for the Quantum to be delivered by Dave Smith, but apparently he has trouble growing crystals in his gardens. So um, we're waiting for Dave Smith to find the right crystals in his garden that actually... <laughs> can actually hold up to 10,000 degrees uh, centigrade Celsius uh, and actually uh, you know, provide jitter-free rhodium clock joy. Uh, so we're waiting for him to, to, to come up with the right crystals. Good. Apparently now, because of the recession, he's going to be growing many more crystals. Uh, so that's good news. So I've been waiting for a year and three months to have a quantum uh, delivered, mm. but that hasn't happened. Okay. But it comes out the crane song, and then it comes back into the computer uh, via SPDIF. Mm -hmm. into uh, Steinberg Wave Lab. Right. And, and then I top and tail it and 
maybe change uh, the gain a little bit, but generally I find I have like maybe three or four LUFs, and that's fine. My mastering engineer understands that. Mm. Um, he works with me on that. I don't need to provide uh, like 30 seconds of noise up front so he can find out how the sound of the studio is because he understands we have the same monitors. Um, and I have a little, little bit of after processing where I do a rough master, um, and then I send the rough master and the straight recording to the mastering engineer to show what I would like mm. and give him the full dynamics to play with that. Yep. Cool. So you don't try and do the mastering engineer's job? No, I mean, I, I do it well enough for playing out in the club mm -hmm. um, because I know what's necessary for a club. Mm. And it still doesn't look like, um, as the saying goes, it doesn't look like a, a log going straight to a sawmill uh, with absolutely zero dynamics or a well-formed turd coming out the toilet with some splashback. <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, there, there's peaks and troughs. It's, it's very, very... Uh, uh, dynamic still <clears throat> and gives him the freedom but if I need to play it out then I do a rough master and the rough master will sound very similar to what he's done mm. but it will only work very well in one situation which is for clubs it mm. will not work well uh, in preempting an Optimod on radio for example you know mm. like in Radio 1 or yep. BBC Radio 6 they seem to have the Optimod set up to the fact that the um, the each male or female presenter sounds like their sibilance is akin to a blowjob on wrong. Um, so it's it's he sets it up for that. He'll set it up for digital aggregation, so that you know uh, on lower rate Spotify it will still sound good. Mm. On tidal it will still sound good. Mm. And yes, I have mastering programs that can actually give me tips and that. But at the same time, it's always good to have a mastering engineer say, hey. Have you thought about this? A mm. different set of ears. That's mm. what I used to teach at SAE. Mm. Be friends with a mastering engineer because you'll find out more about the way that you work and can better that too. Yep. Yep. Solid. Have you, um, how's your cable situation? It's good. I had the last delivery of cables from Switzerland uh, five days ago. Uh, that was to extend the Apogee Symphony out of the mixer rack into an ancillary rack because I don't need to see it. Mm. I've just got to open the box up again and find the dip switch so that when the power comes on for all the racks it switches on automatically without me having to push the button. That's just me being lazy. Um, uh, but yeah, the cable situation is good. I got the cables from Switzerland, um, like I say, four days ago, disinfected them with trionic wipes and then put them in the sun for three, three hours uh, just to make sure that they're okay because obviously metal Mm. You don't know what's happened and you don't want to touch anything, so it's mm. a clean environment. Um, but yeah, the cabling is all finished, absolutely, mm. completely done. Awesome. Uh, yeah, there was one other thing that I was thinking about getting uh, before all this happened. Is that really strange, a pair of those really strange compressors that work on a, uh, a plasma tube. Have you seen that? Mm. The plasma, plasma uh, compressor. Okay. Uh, I was thinking maybe... What over the over the uh, mixed bus or? No, fuck no. That's too mm. too coloured. Mm. Um, no, that'd be near my distortion racks. Um, mm, okay. And maybe if I earn some money this year, <laughs> 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 maybe I do have a space for them. Perhaps, maybe, perhaps. Let's mm. see. Yeah. Um, but how do you ha look with when when you've bought sort of esoteric rack gear like that? Like, how do you go about? test driving it and then determining whether it's worth the big bucks? Um, it's instinct. A lot of it's mm. instinct with me. Sometimes I get it right. With the Apogee Symphony 2 that I got, I managed to part exchange some of the things I got wrong. Okay. So it's not a bad unit, but the Phantom powered compressor called the Phantom, um, it wasn't working well for me. It mm. just and it was also taking up a mic preamp as well to, mm. to give it that sound. Mm. Um, so I actually part exchanged my TG uh, Chandler mic preamp, my Fanzen, uh, my old Apogee uh, for the Apogee Symphony 2. So I, at the end of the year, luckily, I managed to... Re everything in the studio now actually has a place. Mm. There's nothing that's not being used. Everything is being used now. Mm. It takes a while. Mm. But you've also got to allow yourself to make mistakes. Mm. 
uh, not be too critical because you can always part exchange or sell later mm -hmm. on. Um, and how has the new screen impacted your carefully calibrated uh, monitoring position? Weirdly enough, it sounds better. Ah, cool. I didn't expect that. Obviously, the flutters that I had from the screens that were at the side mm. were closing the sound, which I didn't expect. Mm. Um, and my production partner, who I haven't worked with for a few years, actually, Mr. Jones, who used to do unsubscribers and remixes, mm. he came in and noticed it immediately as well. It was like, the sound is much more open, mm -hmm. which I never expected. Mm. Uh, and that was a, a really wonderful sort of coincidence that happened. Mm. And are the ATC 50s, um, are they uh, still just part of the family? Do they need any servicing? Are they all okay? No, the only thing that needed servicing recently, which I was dreadfully excited about because I had something to do, uh, was the coffee machine. Um, mm, I managed gosh. to uh, decalc it. Uh, I have to be careful when I say cow because obviously I think of that New Zealand um, advert of uh, big black cow. Uh, but anyway, um, the coffee machine I, I discovered it. Citric and acid, that, you said. Yes, citric acid. Is that is that uh, uh, is that like the kind of uh, gold standard in how you must decalc your espresso machine? Audio technology, how to decalc. <laughs> uh, your coffee machine lesson volume one. With yeah, that's how you do it. You put you, you put some powder in there. You clean it out. Mm. You, you let it go through a few times. You have green mm. shit coming through. Mm. And now my espresso download time has changed from thirty three point six dial up to broadband. It's actually quite swift now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but for servicing other stuff, no, I mean. The ATC, the ATCs are going to be good to go for ages. I don't mm. push them. There's no point. Mm. Um, everything sounds great. No yeah, have you ever heard of anybody um, replacing the ferro fluid? Is that something? Is that a thing with the I ATCs? love the smell of ferro fluid <laughs> in the morning. Ferro fluid. <laughs> ferro fluid. I love the smell of ferro fluid in the morning. I actually prefer it in the evening. Um, but uh, apocalypse now aside. Um, Ferro fluid, I used to love it. It's a very, very uh, tannoy thing, I think, because of the dual concentric uh, monitors. Yes. Okay. A lot of ferro fluid and neo dying tweeters and shit. Um, ferro fluid was like a really cool thing. I don't know if anyone's replaced it. I don't know if it's even replaceable, but I used to service my tannoy speakers by just replacing the cones uh, because yeah. the cones used to go quite a lot on the tannoys uh, when they used to be tannoys, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, I don't feel the need to really push the speakers except for a last gratuitous bash when sure. I've actually finished it. It's like, sure. okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And also they have little be. LEDs on the front that actually say, hey, hey, mm -hmm. respect us. Don't yep. do this anymore. Yeah, we're British. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's Australian, the guy from ATC, right? Bill. Uh, Bill's originally from Australia. Yeah. Yeah, he used to do Led Zeppelin sound systems, I think. Mm, mm. But I think uh, England's claimed him. I think he's been over there for 40 years or something. So, No, I mean, the, for me, ATC are the best speakers mm. ever um, for clarity, for depth of reverb tail. I think a lot of people go for art burners, as I call them, Ausbergers, <laughs> um, to prove some sort of status point. Um, it mm. seems to me that they're not understanding the situation of, of monitoring really. I'm not going to put mm. them down, but mm. if you compare them to ATCs, mm. there's no comparison at all, really. Uh, because once, when you uh, first uh, fitted out the barge, you um, you test drove quite a few speakers from from memory. So yeah, I, I test drove the um, oh shit, what they called? Begin with N. Neumann. Uh, yeah. The Neumann. The old K and H Cumberland, Hein and Cummel, or whatever. Yes, it's that's called. right. Yeah, Klein and Hummel. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I test drove those uh, because I was interested in them, but there was so much DSP going on in there, mm. which I'm not against, but it wasn't organic. Mm. And I think the final link of the chain should be as organic as possible. Mm. Mm. Uh, not corrections. Not it should be as organic as possible. Mm. And they were interesting. I think I think as a hi-fi speaker, actually they're quite cool. If mm. you can't set up your room, 
uh, I think it's, it's a cool thing to have. And mm. they sounded great, but it's the same thing with, with um, silence headphones, you know, when you're in an airplane, people have those things that they click in the switch. They make me feel sick, because yep. I can almost see the phase alignment trickery going on in my head with all the sine waves going on. Oh, I must count, I must count, I must count. And it makes me feel a bit dizzy and a bit sick. Mm. Uh, I, I hear it, I feel it, and mm. it's, it doesn't work. I, yep. I, I, I hear through it. Yep. Um, so I needed to go for organic, and then we went for PMCs. Mm. Um, and I think PMCs only work in the perfect room. Mm -hmm. I think if you've got a perfect room, mm. then they're brilliant. And a perfect room makes sense if you're entertaining band members, A&R people, and you need different listening positions. But if mm. it's just you or two mm. people, you mm. don't need a perfect room. Mm. And of course, a, a boat is not easy to, to do anyway. Yeah, of course. Um, so the OTCs came in, and then they, they sat down in, in the way they're supposed to, and they sounded like shit. And I was like, what? What's going on? <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. I was listening to Stevie Wonder. I think I told this story to you last time. Listening to Stevie Wonder. Listening to, um, oh shit, uh, Isn't the she Night Fly by, by yeah. the Night Fly by Don. Oh, I've got to look it up. Uh, it's an amazing album. One of the first digital albums ever made, I think, on Mitsubishi's mm -hmm. uh, or the Sony recorders. Yep. Um, Dash Machines. Uh, Night Fly. Album. Here we go. Let's see who did this. My flight album. Blah 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 blah. It's a very bright album. Donald Fagan. Um, and I listened to that on DVD audio, so it was like really high quality. Mm. And all the high percussion, especially in Stevie Wonder, sounded like someone was banging uh, a mallet outside the space shuttle. It was really hurting my head. And then we turned them around because I learned this whole thing about when I was learning how to fly. Uh, which I never got the license, by the way. I uh, mm. just want to be clear on that. But I was learning how to fly, and my 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 um, instructor said to me, "We have a law in in airplanes that if it looks like shit, it's going to fly like shit," which I think is a pretty good thing. You know, <laughs> you don't want to be going up in an airplane that doesn't look right, do you? You want to go be uh, going up in an airplane that looks fucking good, otherwise you're fucked. Um, so yeah, I was always flying in pipers, which you know look pretty damn good. You know. Mm. Uh, I'm not really into those planes where they have the air, air things like that, so you can jump out. And I don't want that. I want to land. I don't want to jump out. Um, so uh, I thought it didn't look right. The speakers mm. looked wrong. So I said, "Can we turn them round?" And he mm. went, "Well, they're supposed to go this way. Yep. Turn them round." Mm. Sounded brilliant. Wow. And they've been there ever since. And yep. then the final thing was the was the Tower Sonics, uh, the, the the stands. And yep. yeah, I have zero complaints. I can't ever, ever imagine ever wanting. In the next ten years, a new computer, mm. new speakers, mm. anything is mm. is set now. Really, mm. I just mm. hope the world survives. But yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Um, the the Tower Sonics and the ATCs will outlive us, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have no temptation. There's no desire to check out the new Tannoy Golds. Not even for old time's sake. Not even for your living room. Right? It's Behringer, right? <laughs> it's Tannoy Behringer now, they are, right? Let's just pretend they're not. No, but they are, right? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> um, are you, uh, there, was, there was a bar in um, Tokyo I used to go to. Remember traveling? Mm, <laughs> remember yeah. flying? Remember other countries? <laughs> remember other people? Remember physically touching people? Gosh. Um, so there's a bar I used to go to where I used to be with other people mm. uh, in Tokyo, and they used to have an amazing hi fi system mm. um, uh, with RCA tubes, and they had these big Tanoi's Windsors, I think. Okay. And all the internal cabling was by Oyeda. Mm. Sound was immense. Mm. So if ever I went for any Tannoy speaker, it would be a Heritage Tannoy speaker retrofitted right. by Oyeda. Um, I, yeah, I mean, mm. obviously the whole Tannoy thing came from my father, but mm. I waited and waited and waited, and nothing really came through, and they got mm. taken over by Dyne Audio, I think, mm. and then mm. Dyne Audio became the, yeah. the priority for studios. Yeah. So. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Dave, I guess um, to wind up, just to return to your 
philosophical I've not done enough winding up already. <laughs> it's a one big wind up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to return to your philosophical musings, because I'm sort of almost guaranteed that no one will have got this far into the podcast. So, you know, you, you and I can just chat about um, your kind of reflections on the dire state of the world and what and and whether there's reflections a silver, silver lining <laughs> how much used to be <laughs> is there a silver lining will will be will we be changed forever in 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 a in a good way it's in some in some way okay so i call all of this uh uh things to stop in europe in february uh everyone called me a lunatic mm. okay fair enough mm. we have three options three paths of future ahead of us i will deal with the most enlightened and beautiful one at the end so people don't go off and die and hang themselves uh number one is let's talk about just the music industry as a whole Mm. um the music industry as a whole relies on people to be employed people to have disposable income that has changed overnight that's mm-hmm. changed it's gone if we are lucky and this is a blip and somehow the virus itself um, mutates as all of these viruses do into a much lighter version mm-hmm. and fucks off and we're done with this in three or four months time there is a recoverable music industry for sure mm-hmm. um, even festivals for sure mm-hmm. if this goes on for longer than that mm. say to the end of this year mm. then that's a different kettle of fish altogether mm. uh, because within my industry um, and again I called for this in February that I said that governments are going to need to uh, be prepared to bail out airlines and airports mm. uh, because if this goes on further and further and further what's going to happen is quite simple is that if we get airplanes back in the ground, of course, cargo planes are still being flown. And if airlines are intelligent, they'll be rotating pilots to keep up their hours. Mm. So that's there's still pilots around to, to fly things. Mm. Um, but cabin crew are going to need to be re- retrained because obviously mm. their safety diplomas will be out of date. Mm. And baggage uh, staff are going to be need to be rehired and security cleared. Mm. And that means even if it's the same baggage crew, they still need to be security clear because you don't know what situation they've gone through in their lives between them and them. Mm. So for the music industry, without um, international travel, it affects two ways. Firstly, of course, the performer, which can't travel backwards and forwards with the same ease. If they can travel backwards and forwards, it's going to be less DJs, less gigs. Uh, a week, maybe you have to choose one gig a weekend because maybe mm. travel is very, very difficult. Mm. Um, and of course, with with regards to festivals, not so much in Australia because Australia is a captive uh, audience as opposed to, uh, as New Zealand is as mm. well. Of course, New Zealand and Australia probably open the borders to each other simultaneously because they would have been in quarantine for the same amount of time. But within Europe, mm. Europe festivals require. 40 to 60 percent of their attendance to be from outside their country so festival is going to be much much smaller mm. on the bright side that does mean that clubbing is going to have a resurgence and the underground might actually come the fuck back in that's so that's okay but you have to bear in mind and i was really upset by a certain article from um a, a, a supposed flag bearer of the scene mm. saying that we must not uh, ask for refunds and stuff it's forgetting and taking the piss in a way of not understanding that people have lost their jobs. Mm. Now, some of those people might have government bailouts for a little bit of time, uh, but it's still less money. Mm. Um, they have to think about food and mm. they have to think about their re- relatives. They have to think mm. about many, many things, mm. uh, things they might not be aware of, like having mm. to buy extra stuff for their kids at home because they're mm. homeschooling. Mm. That there's going to be different financial priorities. Mm. So the whole scene itself, which is there to support morale of the working force, there to provide an escape from people that have been working too hard, mm. uh, there to provide an escape for people that enjoy music, mm-hmm. it will still be important, but 
people will have to make real life choices. Mm. So we we'll have to see on that. Yep. Um, my worst case scenario of all of this is not much fun actually. Mm. Is that I have a feeling that America, if it descends into military lockdown with National Guard in major conurbations, that and with Trump at the top of that, that there is a distinct possibility that there's no one at the helm. I mean, there hasn't been anyway, really, but there's no one at the helm. Now, cast your mind back to Crimea and the fact that Putin just invaded Crimea because he felt he needed to. Mm. Um, everyone wagged their fingers and said, you naughty boy, and uh, we're going to do sanctions, mm. we're not going to recognize Crimea, but mm. nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. The incursion into Ukraine was a little bit more serious, but again, everyone was wagging their finger, but nothing mm. happened. Mm -hmm. So I see this as a distinct possibility that, say, by November, I even have a date in mind for it, November the 10th, I don't know why, mm. that by November the 10th, if all those other things happen, Putin's generals will say to him, and if he's been elected for good now, like the Chinese leader, Putin's generals say to him, hey, let's grab Azerbaijan, mm. let's grab Ukraine, let's grab Georgia, let's grab uh, some other territories that we need, uh, because the worst thing they're going to do is do sanctions, but hang on a minute, there's no world trade. Mm. We need more resources. Yep. So I see this as a possibility. Yep. If the other things go into play, um, I, I see maybe coming up to the border of Poland and stopping. Mm. Um, I see possibilities, maybe perhaps, of fascism rising again in certain countries. Mm. Mm. So this, this is the worst case scenario imaginable. Yeah. But I'm trying to be logical on past historical events. Mm. And for everyone, if this is unedited, for everyone that's listening, no, I didn't go to university. Yes, I left school when I was 15. No, I didn't study history. Yes, I read uh, various different sources of, of, of politics. No, I'm not a political expert. No, I don't profess to be. I'm not a medical expert either. But I've traveled the world and I see trends and I see some things and I see if those other things happen that this could be a possibility and I really hope not, I don't mm. want it to happen. Mm. Uh, my girlfriend who also is very sort of sees things, she sees this as not a possibility but the next time this happens as a bigger possibility because obviously this will happen mm. again at some point. Mm. Um, the good side, Yeah. let's finish on a good yeah, note. Let's, uh, let's, let's hear the good news. <laughs> The good news is that I feel that a lot of us people in the world were heading towards a, can you please stop the world, I want to get off. Mm. Even just for a holiday, mm. not like a holiday holiday, but a holiday from the whole grind of life. Mm. The beginning of this year, I won't hide, I was not looking forward to traveling. I was of course looking forward to gigs, but I wasn't looking forward to traveling. Mm. Having pneumonia last year, having a car accident previous years mm. has changed the way that I feel. Mm. Maybe getting a little bit older has changed the way that I feel. Mm. But I wasn't looking forward to the travel anymore, the stress of it. I know a lot of other people with their own jobs, their own stresses, some of them real job jobs, some of them with real stresses of mm. other people's well-being, were also having the same feeling. And I know a lot of people have actually been using this time to reset, to recenter, mm. to actually find spiritually something within them, even if they don't believe in a, in in in, in God. I'm sorry, Christopher, because I know that you do. But even um, knowing that people don't believe in God, they're looking for a spiritual center mm. that they couldn't have the time to find because of all the other worries. Mm. And I hope that if the world goes in any direction at all that this period of time for the next two, three, six months is used for those people that stay alive, that stay healthy and lucky enough to not catch this and lucky enough to not be fall ill. Um, and obviously some people are going to lose friends, some people are going to lose relatives, it's going to be tough. Mm. But I hope it re-centers us. One of the beautiful things that I learned, and you'll love this because you are religious, is that when I was younger uh, in the UK, on Sundays it was a day of religion which not many people paid any attention to, 
but the shops were closed. Mm. Only a few things were open, like maybe a pharmacy was open or maybe a supermarket was open and restaurants were open, sure. which was about family time, yes. social time. Yes. But the streets were empty. Yep. The harm, the drone of commercial life had yep. gone. Yes. You had that time to either stay indoors, walk with your family, walk mm. with the dog, not buy anything unless maybe you forgot some bread or something. Being sane. Yes. And what I would love, it's not going to happen, but what I would mm. love is that all of a sudden people realize this, this mm. beauty mm. in having a day off from everything being the same, mm. yep. to having a day off of actually not everything being the same. Mm. Maybe, sorry Christopher, maybe not calling it a religious day, mm. but actually calling it a day of peace. Mm. Yep. Peace of mind. Mm. Sure. A punctuation mark. Some, uh, exactly, a punctuation mm. mark to actually mark the end of a mm. week and the beginning of another one, mm. to give us some space to breathe mm. um, and I hope that happens I hope that perhaps people realize that it's not very cool for your politicians in the UK to be voting down uh, a pay rise of, of minimal proportion for key workers such as firefighters and, and, and nurses and actually applaud it in the most remarkably callous and disgusting way and actually then vote themselves MPs a ridiculous pay rise Mm. I hope people can now join the dots and actually realize that this is the case. I hope that from this point on, if we survive this as nations, that we then understand that actually the defense, doesn't matter how or where this virus came from, but the lessons that we learn from it is that we spend 10 to, to percent of our defense budget, which is outside the realm of, of budgeting within uh, government, but it just goes into a central pot, mm. is towards medical health mm. so that because obviously now people who understand the economic destruction that can happen within a month yep and no one's fired a bullet yet mm. no one's launched a bomb yet mm. but yet this has happened yep and I hope that 10% of our national defense goes into medical defense employs staff and that I hope that we actually then have redundancy in our hospitals where a hospital can offer ICU everywhere, but it can also offer cancer treatment everywhere sure. as part of the same package yes. so that it becomes an efficient way of, of dealing with things. And I hope that these eugenic motherfuckers just die themselves. Mm -hmm. People saying that, isn't it amazing that 2.5% of the population that we need to protect completely tanks our economy without realizing that these people helped build the everything that's in the past, that we become better human beings, mm -hmm. that we don't... Uh, pretend to be woke mm. and we don't pretend to uh, pick up rubbish from beaches with our film crew filming us that we've flown here on a private jet yep. and then we actually do some good for the world yep. and I hope we realize that actually dis despite thinking that we are very strong that we actually need each other as a society mm. and I hope that these two three six months whatever the period is that's mm. going to happen mm. and that there's hopefully some sunshine at the end of it we come through better people Mm. and demand an educational system in every single country that educates people equally mm. uh, because without the education because I come from England and I was lucky unlucky enough because my father lost his house but uh, lucky enough to have a private education um, that all education is a good standard for everyone so that actually we can become a better nation of tribes mm. a mm. tribe of nations mm. It's awesome, man. Well, that's what I hope. Yeah, that's awesome. And look, you know, yeah, I don't, I'm just a DJ. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a DJ. Should I speak about DJ stuff? Sorry no, no, I, I invited it. I asked you. So um, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And um, even though you and I uh, don't agree um, on a whole bunch of stuff from a political point, I um, really appreciate that heartfelt assessment and... Um, um, it's okay to differ yeah, politically. It is, yes. Yeah. It, as long as the discourse is respectful. That, that's exactly right. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and thank you for sharing and spending some time with me. And um, yeah, take care. Um, love you loads. And I wish you all the best. You do have sunshine in Australia, right? Because it looks very dark where you are right now. It's night time, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the time is anymore, man. I've lost my talk. <laughs> 
I'm worried. I'm worried about you, Chris, because you're wearing like uh, you're wearing thick clothes and stuff. Is it, is it cold in Melbourne? It's 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 pretty cold. It's night time oh, and I've it's got, about twelve degrees. <laughs> I've got one more message. Go on. Um, uh, if the pub, the bar there, Troika, is still open, it's not. Please, can you please, please, can you stay open until the next time I come to Australia? I'll buy the Chinese food. I want to learn more about music from this wonderful pub and these wonderful uh, people that work there. All right. I miss Troika, and I'd like to say hello to a few friends in Melbourne, if that's okay. Yeah, go on. I, I'm not sure how many people are left watching now, but go for your life. Uh, is this live, by the way? No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to say um, hello to Christopher, uh, another Christopher, who um, Christopher Coe, uh, Digital Primate. Hi, hope you're well. Hope you're keeping well. Hope you're looking after your dad. I'd like to say to, hi to Simone, uh, who has incredible music taste. And uh, I'd like to say hi to Eric Powell and say thank you so much for not allowing me to have my uh, my music uh, royalties it's really appreciated thank you so much for that love you heartfelt <laughs> see you Dave <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>